What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Oudstoppenel. My name is Martin and today we are finally taking a look at the all new, well for us it's all new, Corvette C8. So this is the European edition. So there are slight changes to the European and the American version, which I'll address later. We're a bit late to the party, but let's enjoy this party nonetheless, because this is quite a cracking proposition. So the Corvette C8, as you know, is entirely new in every way, because they have ditched the classic front engine rear wheel drive preferably manual transmission layout and have gone for a mid-engine supercar like setup which was pretty dramatic when they announced that uh, i was a bit let down by that because i just loved the classic corvette recipe it was just unmatched american overpowered rear wheel drive machine think of the c6 zr1 that thing was just immense and this really is like your american ferrari audi r8 lamborghini huracan that's what you think of when you think of the competition but actually this is like a hundred thousand euros in germany so it's more like porsche 718 gts money instead of the way more expensive ferrari so it's really really interesting so the european versions come as standard with the optional Z51 performance pack. So you get uh, upgraded brakes, upgraded aero, you get an upgraded exhaust, loads of more goodies, and also these PS4S tires. 19 inch, 245 section at the front, so not even that wide. Uh, dual wishbone suspension in the front, which, I mean, for, a, for an American car, that is outrageously high tech. Corvette have really stepped up their game when it comes to the suspension of it. So at the rear, we have a 305 section tire, and that's to put all that naturally aspirated V8 power to the ground. And here at the rear, we have a quad exhaust, very angry looking car, a lot of square lines. Uh, just have a look at the exhaust tips, which are square, quad exhaust. The whole car is really boxy and low and wide and quite special looking, I have to say. When you drive this car over here, everyone's like, what the hell is that? Because we are not used to having Corvettes on the road here in Europe. So let's have a look at the engine, which is in the middle, uh, which is pretty unique. We have a mid-engine supercar with a V8. So this is a 6.2 liter V8. It has been slightly down-tuned to meet European emission standards. So the American version has about 500 European horses. This has got about 480 of them. And what amazes me is how low they got it. I mean, just have a look at how far in that engine actually is. It's really far to the middle, it's really low. So that really shows that Corvette is really serious about their setup. And it's pretty practical i would say this is quite a lot of space to store bags and stuff so yeah we're not used to that from european supercars hmm. even got some sort of an auto close really cool loads of cameras by the way we have a rear view camera side view cameras we have a targa roof also pretty cool overall i think it's quite a unique looking car and we also got a glimpse of the z06 they have at the dealership where i picked up this car i mean that car is seriously cool carbon wheels carbon brakes uh this is really it's baby bro and that doesn't mean it's not exciting to drive because let me just show you we have this perfect quiet road over here in germany perfectly paved and nice and twisty something the old corvettes wouldn't really have liked but this one let's listen to that v8 sound quite an important ingredient of the corvette okay i think we're taking off
what the hell? Okay, so I'm going to switch to some kind of sport mode by twisting this button right here. This is track mode. So really that naturally aspirated sound, nice and sporty. And what they also did to make it nice and sporty is combine it with a dual clutch transmission by Tremac. So even the golden olden American high power cars like Shelby GT500, the Corvettes are going dual clutch now. Never thought I would see the day. Okay, let's just go for a drive and go back to like a normal driving mode. Let's just give it a try. Okay, I'm first going to do this section downwards and then upwards to really push it. So when you first start driving it, you think, what the hell, it's super comfy. You really feel that dual wishbone in the front. You don't really have that supercar experience, which normally means you have a really bitey, aggressive front end. This really does not have that. This is more like a Lotus Emira or an Alpine A110, only a lot, lot bigger. But that really is a compliment because it is so composed as like a GT car. Really like that about it. So the engine really responsive. You just don't get that when you put turbos or a supercharger on an engine. It's something we don't get to experience nowadays in Europe. A naturally aspirated V8. So as I said, square is a bit of a theme in the Corvette C8 and we have a square steering wheel. Uh, I don't really like it because when you have traction when you have traction control off you really have to catch the car at times and with the square wheel it's just weird when you hit an edge or a corner when you want to like catch it it can feel a bit weird but i guess that once you get used to it it'll be fine so really nice comfortable composed car in normal mode really like that Let's just press the Z button, which gives us this. The most power, the most aggressive, which is really your B-road attack mode. So not the firmest suspension, but one step up and same goes for the brakes and stuff like that. Let's also put the gearbox into manual mode. They're not collar mounted, no, no, they're steering wheel mounted pedals. I'm just used to, used to collar mounted when I drive a supercar. Uh, and you can really feel that the suspension is a bit tighter and the turn in is a bit sharper. And I just love the linear character of the engine, it's superb. It's not the quickest car, it's quite heavy. It's like 1,730 kilos and you do really feel it, especially in a straight line uh, when you start pushing it hard or when you brake really hard. That's when you feel the weight. Transmission is really sharp and snappy, really like that. The guys at Tremec always do a fantastic job in their front. A little undeliberate upshift. But it really, it dances this car. It just copes with it with a nice, supple movement. It is not the most sharp steering. It's pretty uncommunicative. I have to say it's, it's a bit vague, but 
The suspension makes up for it, no doubt. Okay, let's go into track mode, which should give us an even harder experience, you know. Uh, steering is now in aggressive mode, suspension is, gearbox and engine, everything. And what we're also going to do is go for a slightly more playful character by turning on ESC. How does that work? Yeah, it's like that. But that gearbox, man, it is so good. So steering definitely is a lot heavier. That downshift seems even more sharp right now. <laughs> that is so nice. I mean, this car turned from a comfortable GT Cruiser to a very engaging driver's car in five minutes of driving. Wow! Corvette, what have you done? As I said, I was a bit disappointed to hear it was this mid-engine supercar, but... have done their homework wow I mean remember this thing is a hundred K yeah it's a lot of money but if you look at the competition no one has this offer not even close you don't expect the Corvette to excel at this German B roads that's Porsche territory. This is launch control. We got there. Oh. Short shifting into second, and then zero to 100 in 3.5 seconds, which is pretty damn good. Okay, let's head over to the Autobahn and see what it's like over there. Here we go onto the Autobahn with the Corvette. Now we've driven a few Corvettes in the past and we noticed that Autobahn, super high speed stuff, isn't really what they are about because build quality always was a bit of an issue. We've even had the windows pop out with a C6 I think because of the speed and the air pressure. So I do hope they fix that with the C8. So you do notice that there's a lot of weight, even though it's really low down, which benefits the handling. Uh, and that's why it's so well hidden, all those kilos in the corners. But in a straight line, both braking and accelerating you feel it's a heavy, heavy car and it's not super quick again. So, 100 to 200, it did around nine seconds. It was pretty hard to get a flat spot here in central Germany, which for a 500 horsepower mid-engine semi-supercar isn't too impressive. So. The things you would normally think a Corvette would be good at, it's not really that good at. But the things it's notoriously bad at with the previous gens, it's super good at with the C8. So doing high speed cornering like this is just delightful with the C8. This is so ensuring, it really is confidence inspiring. You can really push it. This is a fast car. Acceleration wise, it's not a fast car above 200. It's actually kind of slow. So 
So that is sort of the downside of the Stingray. I think if you want super performance, you need that Z06, which I hope we can experience one day. I'm just so impressed with that, with the flat plane crank. This is a cross plane crank, more of a classic Corvette style, this Stingray, but that's Z06. Eight and a half thousand RPM, 670 horsepower, five and a half liter V8, naturally aspirated. That's the stuff of dreams. So I really, really like this C8. And I thought I wouldn't. So give it a chance if you're looking for your next sports car because it will probably surprise you as it did me. So, thanks a lot to Corvette Europe for letting us have a go with the new C8. And thank you for watching. Bye guys.